God be with you all, and welcome to this celebration of Holy Eucharist on this, the first Sunday in our Advent season. Wonderful to hear some of the music we would have heard uh, at the Advent procession uh, uh, sung by Carol for us this morning. We begin with the, the grace, the greeting that you'll find in the middle of page two of your service booklets. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We pray together. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We pray our collect for the day together. Almighty God, Give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now, in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. The presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. 
And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Jesus said, in those days after that suffering, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. They will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that hour or day no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves his home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake. For you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Loving God, grant each of us a word from your word, in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. I want you to imagine that you've been away from home for a very long time. You've not seen the familiar things of home. You've not sat down with your dog or your cat dozing nearby. And most importantly, you've not seen those you love the most, your family, for a very long time. Of course, it's happened uh, for centuries. It's happened to military personnel since there were wars and rumors of wars. It happens to people who must travel for work or be away from home for school. These days, it's, it seems to have happened because of the coronavirus. It even happens for families who live far too busy lives and deal with so many early mornings and late nights going every which way that it seems hard to remember the last time we were all together in the same building. 
So what would it be like in any of those scenarios, but especially the long away from home ones, uh, what would it be like if you or I was the one who hadn't been home, and we were on our way home, and when we got to the airport, or to the front door, or came in to the middle of our homes, and there was nobody there when we arrived. No one looking forward to seeing us, no signs of being missed, no preparations, and no joy when we arrived. Now consider the opposite of that. What would it mean to us if the ones you loved were there, waiting, expectant, clearly excited to see us again? Actually, for a couple of weeks now, we have been hearing words but beginning today and for the next four weeks, we are going to especially be hearing urgent messages about being ready for the return or the second advent of our Lord. And they're just going to ramp up Sunday by Sunday. Did you hear some in the readings for today? The mountains will quake. Awesome deeds we did not expect. The sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from heavens, and the power of the heavens will be shaken. And that's just a little from today. They are apocalyptic words, scary words. And if we follow the thought of just our reaction to those kinds of statements, if we follow them too long down in one direction, we might even get a little bit more disturbed by some of the end-is-near connections that are not that hard to make between current events and all kinds of biblical references and prophecies and predictions. Just before our gospel reading for today, uh, Jesus himself gives many of those references um, about unsettling times. And hey, we live in unsettling times. Jesus has been answering his friends' questions about when will all these things take place. And he goes on to give signs of the times. Wars and rumors of wars. Earthquakes. Nation against nation. The need to be on guard. The persecution of truth-tellers. The appearance of false messiahs giving false information that leads far too many people astray. Now it would be easy for me to say, sound familiar? I heard a message this week that referred to an active website, you can look this up, called raptureready.com. Yep, there's such a thing, I checked it out myself. The rapture, in that title, as you may know, refers to what Jesus says uh, about these end times in the gospel, uh, according to Matthew, in which he says, on that day, some will be taken to the rapture in heaven, and some will be left. So, you know, if you're suddenly alone, you know you didn't get the rapture. Uh, somebody else got taken, and you were left. So this website was created uh, by somebody to categorize and quantify the um, uh, trends of the world um, and, and the events of the world into what they call a rapture-ready index. And the accounting seems rather thorough. In each category, you can have a maximum of five. Pandemic, under the category of plagues, maxed out. Uh, global turmoil, check. Financial unrest, wild weather, civil unrest, and civil rights issues, check, check, check. And here's what they say about their website. You could say that the rapture index is a Dow Jones industrial average of end time activity. This is them saying this themselves. But I think it would be better if you viewed it as a prophetic speedometer, so they say. The higher the number, the faster we're moving towards the occurrence of pre-tribulation rapture. Here's their scale. 
a hundred and below, slow prophetic activity, a hundred to 130, moderate prophetic activity, um, 130 to 160, heavy prophetic activity, and above 160, fasten your seatbelts. We are now supposed to be at 183. So are you getting uneasy? Or are you starting to wonder about some people who have way too much access to the internet? If the purpose of the Word of God and all these genuine biblical words of warning were to prompt that kind of calculated fearfulness, well, it seems a little more than strange to me that the phrase that's used in the Bible more than any other is, do you know what it is? Be not afraid. How do you put those two things together? Why all the Advent warnings that get people predicting as they have in every generation when they see some of these signs, the doom and the gloom and the fire and the brimstone? Well, today, just as one way at this uh, subject, Jesus says simply and quietly, think of it this way. A man going on a journey, therefore, Keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come back, in the evening or at midnight or at cockcrow or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes. So there's a reason our Lord wants us to keep our eyes open, to be vigilant, to be ready, and not to be afraid, to be about our master's business, to be ready to welcome and receive him with joy, in fact. He is the one who yearns to be welcomed home, just like that example I had you think about at the beginning. Welcomed home by us in whatever form his arrival may take. And he wants us not to be surprised by his homecoming or paralyzed by fear by any of the things that are going on around us, which is why he tells us about them in the first place. The world says many striking things, uh, the, sorry, the word says many striking things, so that we are not surprised by the signs of the times when they occur. We are not supposed to read our thoughts inspired by fear or the popular ways of the world into God's word. A lot of people do that. They read things into God's word. Instead, Jesus came and promises to come again because we need to see God's presence and God's action entering into our lives and our hearts. And, as Advent reminds us, we need it right now. So, Advent, with any of the devotions that we use to stir our hearts uh, or our actions, uh, traditions and devotions and other things that will help us to keep our eyes open, Advent is a wake-up call, a readying cry, an expecting kind of looking out the front window uh, so that, uh, uh, because God knows we need his Advent, his coming. We needed the first one that we celebrate every Christmas, and the next one, uh, we need when all is yet to be realized of his promises. And God wants us to be open and unafraid and even excited, not one day, but today. Because, paraphrasing Pastor Courtney Allen Crump, today we need connection in the midst of isolation. We need signs of light in days overshadowed with darkness. We need shoots of hope springing up in the midst of all that wearies us and makes us afraid. We need to see acts of peace in all the chaos, gestures of love in all that divides, and we need glimpses of joy in the many sorrows we have known this year. So Advent is for people who know and can honestly admit that we need help and we choose hope. It is for people who know how to tell the truth from fear-mongering and distraction. It is for those who would be open to the truth about how we are doing and what we can do 
with all that is going on around us in the world. And it is about the difference that God wills to make in the world. So we are getting ourselves ready. We are helping one another to get ready for the coming one and to celebrate his arrival. We don't want to neglect either of his advents or to get distracted by the threats uh, and the fears and the busyness or business uh, of the world. We want to be those who are awake to God in the world, to be about God's works of love and light and hope for others in the here and now, and to be alert and aware of the signs of God that are at work around us even now. There is a poem called The Advent Credo, which was shared with me this week um, uh, by a, a man named Alan Bosek, and it goes like this. It is not true that creation and the human family are doomed to destruction and loss. This is true. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It is not true that we must accept inhumanity and discrimination, hunger and poverty, death and destruction. This is true. I have come that they may have life and that abundantly. It is not true that violence and hatred should have the last word and that war and destruction rule forever. This is true. Unto us a child is born, Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting, the Prince of Peace. It is not true that we are simply the victims of the power of evil who seek to rule the world. This is true. To me is given authority in heaven and on earth, and lo, I am with you even unto the end of the earth. It is not true that we have to wait for those who are specially gifted, who are the prophets of the church, before we can be peacemakers. This is true. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. It is not true that our hopes for liberation of humankind, of justice, of human dignity, of peace, are not meant for this earth and for this history. This is true. The hour comes, and it is now, that the true worshipers shall worship God in spirit and in truth. And he concludes by saying, so let us enter Advent in hope, even hope against hope. Let us see visions of love and peace and justice. Let us affirm with humility, with joy, with faith, with courage, Jesus Christ, the life of the world. Amen. Would you please stand with me? And let us confess our faith as we say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray with confidence to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In our Anglican communion, we pray for the Lusitanian Church, Bishop Jorge Pina Cabral. We pray for Linda, our primate, Anne, our metropolitan, Shane, our bishop, Kenneth, our priest, and all priests of our diocese renewing their vows tomorrow, our wardens, our parish pandemic planning team. In our diocese, we pray for Anglican Social Services, Center 454, and for their acting executive director, Rachel Robinson. In our companion diocese, we pray for the Virgin Mary Episcopal Church, Yerbid Jordan. We pray for all the members of our parish family, for all able to worship with us in person, and for all who are worshiping with us remotely. Lord, guard and direct your church in the way of unity, service, and praise. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for peace in the world. Grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Give to all nations an awareness of the unity of the human family. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Cleanse our hearts of prejudice and selfishness and inspire us to hunger and thirst for what is right. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Teach us to use your creation for your greater praise, that all may share in the good things you provide. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all who are in need of God's help and our care. The Reverend Bill Simons, the Reverend John Asquith, Bishop Michael Hawkins and his family, Gwen Hooker and family, Jean, Terry, Cindy, Betty, Janet, Jim, Spencer, John and Hillary, Karen, Shirley, Peggy, Maureen, Mary, Jimmy, Christine, Robert, Noel, Cheryl, Edith, Ruth, Lois, Jen, Marilyn, Jeff, Helen, Junie, Faye, Heather, Shirley, Betty, Colette, Maggie, Margot, Ben, Adam, Bruce, Margaret, Don, Jan and Peter, and Crystal and others who are in our hearts today. We pray for all who are sick in quarantine and self-isolating and for those who are afraid. Show them your kindness and mercy. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our queen and all in authority, for Justin, our prime minister, and all striving to keep us safe and well including all hospital staff, Glenn and all firefighters, and Gord and Janice and all paramedics and the staff of all retirement and nursing homes. Strengthen all who give their energy and skill to the care and healing of those who suffer from illness or despair. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the repose of the souls of Albert Hooker and John Brazil, and all who have died in this pandemic, and for those who died this past night. Grant a peaceful end and eternal rest to all who are dying, and your comfort to those who mourn. Lord, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. We give thanks for all who have made our frozen berry campaign a success, for those who worked on the weekend to distribute the berries, for those who 
work to sell berries and for those who purchase them. And we give thanks for the presence and witness of our sister Sue Wallet and our brother Alan Kearney in our midst. We pray for God's blessing and traveling mercies on them as they move to new homes and parish families in Montreal and British Columbia this week. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We continue in prayer with the general confession you'll find at the top of page eight in your service booklets. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Where you are standing, if you would greet one another with the peace of Christ. There's a voice in the wilderness crying, a call from the ways of trod. Prepare in the desert a highway, a highway for
We offer ourselves and these gifts, the gifts sent into our parish church by mail and electronic means, the gifts that you brought and deposited at the, uh, at the way into the church today, those who supported our, our berry sales and our bazaar and, and several other means this, uh, this fall. We offer all these gifts saying, God of love and power, your word stirs within us the expectation of the coming of your Son. Accept all we offer you this day and sustain us with your promise of eternal life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. I invite you to remain standing at the beginning of our Eucharistic prayer. And then after we say the Sanctus, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, you may remain standing or kneel or be seated as is your custom for prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer. He is your living Word, through whom you have created all things. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh of the Virgin Mary and shared our human nature. He lived and died as one of us to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. In fulfillment of your will, he stretched out his hands in suffering to bring release to those who place their hope in you, and so he won for you a holy people. He chose to bear our griefs and sorrows and to give up his life on the cross that he might shatter the chains of evil and death and banish the darkness of sin and despair. By his resurrection, he brings us into the light of your presence. Now with all creation, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious God, accept our praise through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on the night he was handed over to suffering and death, took bread and gave you thanks, saying, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. In the same way, he took the cup saying, this is my blood which is shed for you. When you do this, you do it in memory of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you this bread and this cup, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We ask you to send your Holy Spirit upon the offering of your holy church, Gather into one all who share in these sacred mysteries, filling them with the Holy Spirit and confirming their faith in the truth, that together we may praise you and give you glory through your servant, Jesus Christ. All glory and honor are yours, Father and Son, with the Holy Spirit, in the Holy Church, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. 
Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Keep the watch when night is near. One more light the foe shall brim, shining beyond the frosty weather, bright as sun and moon together. People who kiss and sing today, love the star is on the way. Angels announce with shouts. Of mirth, Christ who brings 
Let us pray. God, for whom we wait, you have fed us with the bread of eternal life. Keep us ever watchful that we may be ready to stand before the Son of Man. We ask this in the name of Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. Know that God loves you so much that he came to be with you and he yearns to come home again. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this Advent and always. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Well, it's great to be with you on this uh, beautiful morning. Uh, I, um, you, you know the expression, the old saw, I love hard work, I could watch it for hours. Um, uh, I did some of that yesterday out at my study window as people were uh, lining up and, and the volunteers were working from uh, before noon until 6 o'clock. Uh, a huge effort on the part of uh, a number of you and... Um, and we're very grateful for all those who supported the berries sales uh, with, uh, with uh, purchases, as well as the online bazaar, the, um, the tortier making and, and selling, and also uh, Christmas cakes. Uh, so all kinds of things being done uh, within our restrictions uh, to support our parish church and out of love for Christ and his church, and we're very grateful for that. Um, now, there's some special news about a, a change of detail for the bazaar, people bringing in baking, and the pickup days. And Al, can you say a word about that? Microphone, best thing, yep. Good morning. Um, because of the success of the sale, um, the bake table requires a full day of prep to get everything ready. And working around the pickleballers, <laughs> uh, we've had to give up, or we, we had scheduled a pickup date for Thursday. That has now been canceled. Instead, that will be the prep day for the baking group. Uh, so those of you who are bringing in baking, which was supposed to be on Wednesday, will now be Thursday morning. Um, now the pickup day now will be on Saturday only. And some parishioners may get the call to come and pick up their items if they don't have any baking, but we haven't addressed that yet. So far it's going very well and uh, it's looking great. Thank you. Al, what's the time on Saturday for the pickup? Saturday, <clears throat> sorry, Saturday it will be from 1 o'clock until about 6 o'clock. 1 till 6. On Saturday afternoon. Yes. yes. Thank you, Al. Okay. I hope you've had a chance, if you, if you have a computer and internet access, to look at the uh, bazaar, the Jingle Bell Bazaar online. Uh, wonderful photographs and write-ups, and uh, you can just imagine the work behind the scenes to create all those things, to prepare that website, and of course, to, um, to uh, be doing the work that's on this uh, coming Saturday. So um, we're very grateful for those gifts. Um, I was, uh, somebody pointed out to me that in the bulletin you have here um, a, pre uh, a preview of the uh, end of Advent and early Christmas tide services on page 15. And it does say the word premier, but just so you know, Sunday, the December, uh, uh, for, uh, uh, the December 20th, that's the day, that's the fourth Sunday of Advent. We'll have an 8 and 10 service in the morning. And, and virtually, on YouTube, 
the lessons and carol service will premiere it won't be held here in the building we recorded the voices uh, last week and uh, and over the last several years in fact and so they'll all be put together by our video editor uh, up in the balcony there and uh, and and premiered for us so we can sit safely at home and see that service of lessons and carols and the other ones are as they are described with the exception of um, the four o'clock on Christmas Eve uh, that one will be filmed we hope and uploaded sometime thereafter and um, as I mentioned before, uh, we're reminded, of course, that things could change at a moment's notice, and we might have to alter some of these things and turn them into something else. Uh, but that's the plan, as we say, God willing, and, um, and that uh, you can begin to share with people uh, about our worship uh, patterns and services, and um, we're going to work on that assumption. I'm very conscious today of the churches west of us in Toronto, with 10 people allowed, and at some places out west with no one allowed. And, um, and, and though uh, we don't compare ourselves to other people, while our heart goes out to them, you can see why for six months we were careful here. And we had a great team in Ottawa and a great team in our parish, and we've been very careful here so that we could be here today. And, God willing, from now on, more and more people. And uh, uh, it, it, uh, it breaks my heart to hear about the folks out west who are looking at uh, a closure for the first time and all that that means for them as they enter Advent and come towards Christmas tide. So uh, be praying for them. There was a note in the bulletin about, in, in our prayers about the renewal of vows. It's not just me. Um, the, um, uh, the priests of the Diocese of Ottawa annually renew our priestly vows, usually in Lent. Uh, it used to be in Holy Week, but we thought that was just crazy. And um, so we do it in Lent, and that's when the oils for anointing the sick and for chrism for baptism are blessed and distributed and that's happening tomorrow on St. Andrew's Day and that's why that's there in the bulletin and the note from Brenda. Are there any other announcements? Well, this would have been an occasion when a coffee hour and a chance to greet after the service, uh, especially to say Godspeed and farewell uh, to our sister Sue and to our brother Alan. And of course, we're not allowed to do that. And they, indeed, we're not allowed even to stop to greet one another on the way out of the building. And that's to keep us all safe. So I invite you, uh, following the service, to follow the arrows up the center aisle and over to the, um, the office wing exit, not stopping to chat. Uh, on your way uh, as you make your way home today.